It was the beginning of summer 2021. The COVID pandemic was still raging, keeping people inside. But not these two high schoolers, Hunter and Andrew. Itching to make good use of their summer time, they made their first post offering our job services on neighborhood social media next door, complete with pictures of the proudest clean windows that they had cleaned. And the rest, as they say, is history. Hunter Esquera and Andrew Shaw of San Francisco Bay Area had formed their first business venture. We are your guys. Hunter and Andrew have returned back with their services year after year, bigger, better, and with more like-minded students, while actively pursuing their education. However, data indicates that the overall trend across United States regarding holding jobs during high school and college is declining. In the year 2021, there were only 36% of high schoolers holding summer jobs almost half of what it used to be in the 80s. Research after research has shown that the benefits of holding jobs as teenagers is more than just saving for college. It helps them gain important life skills that are crucial for long-term success. Time management, responsibility, ability to network, building confidence, and money management. Yet, the decision between loads of school and after-school activities and holding a job is increasingly a tough decision for students and parents. Today, we will learn about the experiences of young entrepreneurs who started their own business as high schoolers. This is Career Calling, and I'm your host, Pratibha Pan. My guests today are Andrew Shaw and Hunter Esquera the founders of We Are Your Guys. Andrew is a college freshman at San Diego State University majoring in business, finance, and information systems. Andrew is an active participant in programs that help him nurture his interests at the intersection of finance and technology. Hunter is majoring in business and minoring in data science at UC Berkeley Haas School of Business. Along with his academics, Hunter is an active member of his school's consulting club and is currently interning at PricewaterhouseCooper as consultant and also finds time to play on Calman's lacrosse team. Together, they have founded and grown We Are Your Guys. In Andrew Shaw's own words, I created We Are Your Guys as a way for students to foster strong relationships and network with the community around them through labor and service towards people who are elderly and or disabled. This has grown into an establishment where we assist the community in various labor activities and work while saving for higher education and keeping flexible hours for the busy student schedule. Let's hear from Andrew and Hunter about their experiences as teen entrepreneurs. Welcome to Career Calling. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us. As a community member, I have seen you probably your very first post announcing your business, and I've seen you grow and how much you are admired in the community. So congratulations on the success you have had with your business. For the audience, can you give a quick pitch on what is your business? Explain your venture. Yeah, what do you do? I can give a brief showing of what Warrior Guys is. Me and Hunter started Warrior Guys in the summer of 2021, so about two years ago. This is the third summer. The idea behind Warrior Guys was to help the community. It started off, we were cleaning my grandma's windows, and she paid us. She paid us a good amount of money, and I asked her why she paid us that much. And she goes, if you don't, someone else will. And I we were on the ride home. We were driving, and we're like, we can make some money off this. And then when we were creating the base of what we wanted to do, we really actually wanted to help others, right? Money's great. It helps us save for college. We're two university students, so it was really cool. In our advertisement, we advertised not only, you know, manual labor, but being able to build connections with the community around us and to really help others. I think community was really important in the foundation of Warrior Guys. Obviously, it's manual labor work, 
But I think the skilled labor, it's taught us many things about trade work and things that we can learn that are really going to be helpful in our day-to-day life, not only in the business field, but in our real life, as well as helping others who really can't do certain jobs for themselves. I think it's important to be able to get out in the community and help others. And there's so many ways for students to get involved, even if it's not a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have any kind of list of these are the type of the services that we will provide when you first started maybe making your blueprint of your business, so to speak? Did you think of these are the services that we will provide? Yeah. So like Andrew said, when we started out, we washed his grandma's windows. And so right off the bat, that was our specialty. I think uh, that first time. There was a lot of trial and error, and we learned a lot about the technique that went into it. And then we kind of just dove into that. We advertised our services. We took some pictures of the windows, and we're pretty proud of what we were able to accomplish. And so going into that, advertising, we really focused on our window washing expertise and the skill we had built with that, as well as just more unskilled labor, too. I think something that anyone can provide is helping people move, helping stuff around the house. We sometimes, like, we build stuff, gardening, anything like that, but... We really wanted to try to focus on something that wasn't so easy and something that not every was able to provide for others. And I believe you were in high school at that time, correct? Yep. So you must have been very busy with all the figuring out college admissions and everything. So how did you plan your business and hours and what's your model going to be? You want to take that one? Sure. So I was, in, he's a year older than me. He's an incoming junior at Haas School of Business at Berkeley, and I'm a sophomore at San Diego State University. So during the application process for me personally, I felt it was very interesting. I was also playing football, which was two and a half hours a day. And to this day, Mm -hmm. I usually work seven seven days a week. So I'd get up 7 or 8 a.m. I'd work until 2 p.m. I'd grab lunch and I'd head out to football until, you know, 6, 7 o'clock at night. Get home, do some homework, and do a little more of the application research find out a little bit more about essays, think of themes I could do, and maybe make a brainstorm of what I wanted to do. But I think I actually, I felt like I was able to go away in what I was supposed to do and do it well. I think that's something that football really taught me personally, was how to time, mm-hmm. how to use time management. And Warrior Guys just did it, made it even better. Time management is such an important skill. And I think throughout work, throughout football, throughout job, and throughout application season for colleges, I think that all these things put together time management and they teach me if you stay busy, you're going to be successful no matter what you're doing. Yeah. And then I can touch a little bit too. So for myself, I was going into my first year of college actually. So I'd already been accepted. And so uh-huh. I had a lot of time on my hands. And so I was really able just to dive into it. I spent the majority of my time during the week with where you guys. So that would be like you said, waking up seven or eight, going into a job, maybe two throughout the day. And I really enjoyed that because from my perspective, I only had two months left at home. And so I really wanted to make the most of the time. And so I think that was really valuable because, you know, rather than having the idea that, okay, I have two years to build this thing, it was more, we have two months, let's make it happen. And so it was really cool mm-hmm. to be able to dive into it completely, spend the bulk of my time, whether that was advertising, doing jobs, research, and trying to tr- like recruit others. I think it was something that having that availability and having that, yeah, time just really helped with. Tell me a little bit more about how did you structure the business? Did you think of it as two of you or like how many resources you were planning to have and what kind of business model you thought through? Any thought process that went in? Can you talk about it? Uh, sure. I think from the start, it was pretty organic. That first couple of days, it was the two of us, we'd go out to a job. We really like to work in teams. We feel like it provides a lot of value to customers, whether that's just having someone there to help you, having someone to hold the ladder for safety reasons. I think teamwork was a really big part of our platform. And so those early days, yeah, it was just us two. But then we quickly realized we had a lot of traction, a lot of job demands, and we weren't able to keep up with it in the time constraints that we had going on. And so that kind of led to this question of, okay, who do we get to help? And so it turned out we were pretty lucky to have a really good friend group who was also interested in making money and saving for college and had all the same goals that we did. And so we taught them everything we had learned at that point, how to wash windows, how to message customers, stuff like that. And from there, we two to, I think we brought in another two guys and then it was six. And today we have a team of anywhere from eight to 10 people. And it's really cool to see how it's started from just the two of us. And now it's a full-fledged operation, which is pretty cool. I think added to that, 
something that was really important is a lot of us that's in the friend group that we have, we're all pretty invested in people. And I think it's important. You are who you, you spend time around. I think if you spend time around people who are invested, it's important. As well as that, a lot of us had minimum wage jobs and things like that. And a lot of students don't like their jobs. You don't want to have a minimum wage job and do that. And it was really cool to be able to work with my best friends on a daily basis. They made jobs that, and if I did them myself, I probably wouldn't have fun with them. But just being able to spend time around people I love, it's just something I really enjoy doing every day. Like building relationships and having fun with people. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you did keep it around minimum wage, right? That's how you started. Yeah. So actually, I think one of the, one of the big pitches from your bringing people in was actually like you're earning, we paid our employees typically it would range per job per project some of our employees were making 25 an hour at 17 for a job that didn't require any previous skill and so i think that was something that was super beneficial to our employees and growing our business was that people wanted to work it provided a lot more skills rather than i think it's kind of hard to leverage a minimum wage opportunity whether that's in food service or like a a retail Mm -hmm. store versus with us i think something that to this day, we all talk about it on our resumes, whether that's in job applications, college applications. And I think that was also another benefit that really drew people into was just having the experience of being a part of like, essentially a startup and that whole like, process and everything was really cool. Yeah. And I think it's really important to note as well that a lot of people pay money for things like moving jobs and all that. Oftentimes, a lot of moving companies won't do a job unless it's a certain time period, unless you pay like an unreal amount of money, such five, $600. And a lot of people can't afford that. And I think a, a target that we look for is low income people in the area. A lot of the times Silicon Valley, they're forgotten. You know, they need to be helped and they need to be serviced no matter what the cause is. Today, I helped someone with another friend and we worked on a guy. We moved his whole house over for $200 all day. We just wanted to help out and get out there and service the community. I think it's just a wonderful thing that we're able to do. Yeah. And. It is evidenced by the traction you get. Like, I remember your first message. I think in no time, there were like some 300 responses or something like that. And that's probably has been repeated year after year. Yeah. Yeah. It's unreal. I think we've literally only posted one time on Nextdoor every summer. And that's provided with us with basically all the jobs we need between the, our Nextdoor posts and our returning customers. Yeah. Our client base has gotten to be over 500 mm-hmm. customers. So. It speaks for itself. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Among all the asks that you get, do you prioritize? Do you have any strategy on how many jobs you want to take and what kind of jobs you want to prioritize? Do you have anything like that? I think one of the best things is how flexible it's been. It's up to us, honestly, setting our schedule and what we do. Um, there's been times where we've had to turn down a job because it's just not in our wheelhouse, whether that was a dangerous job or a job that we didn't feel like we were skilled enough for. But I think most of the time it's nice because say we want to have a week off, we can, and we can mm-hmm. shift those parts over to other team members. And yeah, I think sometimes we specialize in windows, so we prefer to do that, but we have some people who love moving jobs. And so I think it's pretty easy to be flexible. And I think it also allows us to do what we want to do, but also every job gets done. I don't think, and unless honestly, there's like a, like an unreal, like a possibility that we can't do the type of job we can't do most of the time. We're like, we're the go-to guys for our customers. Yeah. And I think it's important mm-hmm. to what he's saying about flexibility. As a high school student playing football and managing college applications, most jobs won't accept us with that type of schedule. They don't have a schedule that would fit for them. And I think where guys was able to help me so much, because not only was I able to give back to the community, but the community was able to give back to me in order to give me a place where I could have my own flexible schedule while pursuing the career that's really best for my professional investment. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, did you face when you started out, I know you got a tremendous traction and you have a great cause in mind. Were there any challenges? There are a lot of students who may want to be in your position, who may want to start something. What were some of the initial things that you needed to take care of in terms of logistics or any investments you had to make? Were there any challenges initially that you faced or safety maybe? Can you talk a little bit about it? hundred percent. I think what was really important, first off, that I think a couple of people didn't really take into consideration was financial bookkeeping. From the start, my mom no. told me as a high school student, she goes, write everything down in a notebook. You're never going to know when you need to write down your finances. 
And obviously I did that. Some of my friends didn't. And I, I didn't know how long we would be doing it for. So obviously I didn't stress it upon them. To this day we have, I have all my financial bookkeepings over three years, uh, very well put with numbers and customer names and numbers and uh, addresses and everything. And one thing I wish is so much money that we've made, it has gone away and I haven't been able to keep it as a, a straight up number. I have a certain amount and I think that was something that we really messed up on in the beginning was not taking our finances seriously enough. But to this day, I think mm -hmm. it's some weakness that we've turned into a strength. And it's something that I've been able to get better at with Excel and spreadsheets and things of that sort. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add on to that. I think more so like operational challenge was I remember one of our first jobs, we had a pretty big house and we were doing the window washing and our technique just wasn't working. I don't know. I think at the time it was we were using paper towels instead of microfiber towels to dry the windows and at the time i didn't really know the difference and i didn't think there was one and so we're panicking we didn't want to take more of the customer's time and but we also didn't want to sacrifice our quality and so i think the biggest thing was just researching on the the best practices proper techniques in order to get the job done as best as we could and i think that took some time i think our first jobs probably weren't up to the standard that our jobs are now but we still did a good job and I think it was, we were kind of learning on the job. It wasn't something that we had a lot of experience going into, but I think just having that mindset of getting better every day and doing what's best for our customers really helped us out. Now, I wanted to double click on what you said, Andrew, in terms of the finances. Is your operation always individual, your team members, whatever they work, they are responsible for what they get or are you managing centrally, if you don't mind talking about it? Yeah, I can jump on that now, actually. So at the beginning, yeah, I was completely independent. When we had a job, for example, that we couldn't do ourselves and we needed a team member to do that, we left all of that to them. We left the pricing to them. We had general guidelines, but I think it carries out the job. And then we also, mm -hmm. like, and all that, it was all on the individual employee. And so I think that's been the biggest thing that the past two summers, especially this summer that we're trying to do is make that process a central process that goes through us. Currently, mm -hmm. we're in the process of building an app so that we take care of scheduling, to take care of taking payments and paying employees and making it something that's a little more organized, a little more, a little more streamlined so that our, our sake making it easier, but definitely for the customer's sake. That's the natural, I think, growth process. You're going through the growing pain of any startup that would go through. How are you thinking about this business? Now you all are going through your college finishing up, or maybe you will have other full-time jobs later. How are you planning to take this forward? Yeah, the great question. I think it's something that honestly changes month by month for me personally. I, mm -hmm. this summer, I'm doing an internship, so I'm not on the ground doing these jobs anymore. But I think I'm trying to transition my role to stay involved and more so like an administrative role. Like I said, building the app is something that I'm really like you know, passionate about. I really want to get done. I think it will be huge for our business. And honestly, even just for the sake of being able to carry it on and make sure that it stays past us. So I think it's tough. I think. Once we're working full time, done with college, it's not going to be something that we can do anymore. This like the time's running out, but I think we have a pretty good plan on how to keep it going and how to keep it where you guys on for another couple years at least. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. I'm kind of in my internship search right now for next summer since I'm an incoming sophomore only. So I've been really in charge of the work on the ground. I think something I've been doing is really looking for new talent. I think I'm looking towards high school, late high school students that are looking towards that college push and want to make money to learn and to invest in their college savings as well as to meet new people and kind of network. So that's what I'm looking for right now. I'm running the interviews and that search as well as helping Hunter in terms of a website and app database and things like that. How do you approach? Is this mostly your college, sorry, your high school where you went to or in your neighborhood? How do you find people? Yeah, so we have been doing rear guys in the San Mateo County mostly. I think we've done a little bit of work in the Berkeley area as well as down towards San Jose and then a little bit in San Diego this year. So it's where you guys just branched off into different parts of California, which I think is actually really cool. But at the same time, I think currently I'm looking to really strengthen the San Mateo County area because that's where we're known for and be able to find students that are willing to help out and students that are willing to work to just to continue the database and to continue who we are as students and as a company to go forward in the next few years. I think it's important because even when we're gone, we really want the community to be helped out. 
so many touching stories and people we've met, and we don't want to lose that as students. I think we've learned so much in and out of work, and we want to continue that for other people to come. Yeah, that's really amazing. Tell me about uh, that aspect that you talked about. How have you benefited? Are there any interesting stories of what you learned as small business owners that you took forward for your college college experience or maybe your career? We'll touch upon what are you doing now in a bit, but how has this helped? What have you learned? Oh, hundreds, literally hundreds of stories personally, right? <laughs> People, heartwarming stories, touching stories, really, you know, everyone has their own story. Putting yourself a mile in someone's shoes is so important. This weekend, me and another of our employees, the third guy we started it with, we helped a woman and her husband had just died and she had been moving all these things. And you don't realize how important work like that is for someone, even getting paid. She sat there as we finished and she actually started crying when we had to comfort her. And it was important to realize that people are struggling everywhere and it's important to really be able to help out in the community. I think there's so many touching stories that I've made and so many people I've met and so many relationships I've created. One woman, we had a 90 year old woman. We helped her out for about two hours one time, right when we started and helped clear her kitchen out as she was going to go paint it with her husband. And she paid us a lot of money just because she wanted to spread kindness. And the thing that was so beautiful about it was that after our original job, we maintained a relationship with this woman. And she actually, every Christmas, we come over and we have a night with her and we just eat cookies and drink hot chocolate. Oh. Three straight years, just based on a job we've met with a random person. It's a small world. So it's, it's literally, it's beautiful being able to network with people and just make new friends, right? A nine-year-old woman, if you she were to tell her grandkids or her kids that she was having two random guys in for, for hot chocolate that she met cleaning out their kitchen, you'd never believe it, right? But just being able to talk to someone and connect on a personal base, it's just so beautiful. And it's like a day-to-day -day thing that I, I love so much. Yeah, I, I love them too. Like Andrew said, there's hundreds of stories. Just the joy of getting to work with your friends even too, like I, you know, countless memories of unbelievable jobs we did such as like me and my one friend third guy who started this with us we one time spent three days on a window washing job I mean, it was unreal but we still look back and laugh about how difficult that was and what a process it is and i think it's just so fun you know how grateful the customers are too i actually recently wrote about an interaction i had with a customer in my application essay the hall school of business at berkeley and it was really cool because <laughs> looking back i really thought about how impactful my work had been in this one time we were helping a lady move who had just gotten back from surgery. She lived in an apartment by herself and there's literally no other way for her to make her apartment wheelchair accessible. And so to have us come in and do that like work at an affordable price was something that she was so grateful for. And it really stuck with me even to this day. That's why I wrote about it. I think that's the coolest thing. It's just we keep having these stories of even to our mm -hmm. surprise times, like it, it just means a lot. And it's been really fun. Yeah, this is so beautiful these experiences that you're making. Now, you have forged your own careers outside of this business as well. The, can you both talk a little bit about what you're doing today and what your career plans are outside of this? Yeah. So obviously, Hunter is a little further into his career search than I am. I'm still learning, just finishing my freshman year. Currently, my big focus has been networking, especially company alumni fraternity alumni, people in my database. It's a small world. One time I read an article that really stood out to me. It's about the small ties theory from Stanford University. And basically it tells you that life isn't as small as you make it out to be. There's so many people with so many perspectives and so much wisdom in the world. And if you stick to the people you're around, it'll only get you so far. Being able to learn from so many people, it's awesome. I love learning. It's something that I've always loved going to school, whether it be going to school, whether it be doing interviews, whether it be new, meeting new people. Last week, I met with a branding manager at Disney and a recruiter at Qualcomm. And I learned so much from these people, building connections and looking towards what I want to do in my life, right? What is it? Does it finance? Is it accounting? Is it sales? Is it marketing? What do I want to do? Who do I want to be? And that's something I, I've been searching for. And I think this summer has really helped me out with that a lot, as well as where your guys. So 
I think currently I'm really looking to do what I want to do next summer as well as what I want to mm-hmm. do with my Yeah, and then pull that up. Like Andrew said, I'm a little further down my career path. So I started at my freshman year at UC Berkeley and I knew I wanted to do business of some sense, but I didn't really know what. And uh, my friend invited me to join a consulting club. And so I applied, I was able to get in and I realized like consulting work was something that really interested me because I liked business. I liked kind of the strategy aspect. And I was interested in finance, but I wasn't so sure about the idea of doing the same thing every day for the however long my career is. And so consulting, having the ability to do a lot of projects, work for different clients in different industries really drew me in. And so after two years at my club consulting, where we did nonprofit consulting, very similar to where you guys, honestly, just small businesses. And I felt like my experience at where you guys was also really valuable for that. But yeah, so recently I, this summer I'm completing a consulting internship at PricewaterhouseCoopers. And then, yeah, so it's management consulting within the deals transformation. It's been really cool because I, I really do enjoy consulting. It's been fun to learn skills like Excel, how to use data, how to manage data using tools like Power BI. And it's been really fun. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm looking at pursuing a career in consulting. I also recently got into the Haas School of Business. So I'm excited to take classes on investing in finance, see if that's also an avenue I want to go down. But I hope it ended, but leaning towards that consulting path now. But both of you seem to be in some areas of business. That's where your interest lies. Yeah, yeah. I think we're, I think we're both going down the business path wholeheartedly. And I think, at least for me, where you guys is a really big part of that. Yeah, I think 100%. Yeah. What's funny is Hunter and I, what's really grown our relationship is how similar our life paths have been. Obviously, different lives, but similar paths. We well, started yeah. playing baseball when we were really young kids, right? But at the same time, we always have the same interests. Entrepreneurship something that has gone both our ways, whether it be the lemonade stand as a kid that we ran. But I think <laughs> We Are Guys has really pursued us to business and really shown us how interesting, how rewarding a business experience can be. And obviously, I said I was going to minor, I think I'm minoring in information systems. I'm going to declare it. He's thinking about data science. So technology has been a big part of our lives. But I think that the business aspect of our lives is something that's really changed who I am as a person. And I really hope to be able to use it for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think another reason why it has been rewarding also is that you have kept cause at the center of your business, right? That's the front and center of your business. And that's what I think makes it very interesting to me, having been a long-term tech professional who has managed people. I see a change. I see a shift in the workforce, the younger generation, how they look at their careers. So very curious to learn from you. What does career mean to you? What would be important? When you look at career, other than the domain, what do you want out of career? I think at mm-hmm. the end of the day, something I've always talked to my dad about. It. My dad's my best friend. He's my idol. And, you know, at the end of the day, as long as I have a healthy family, a healthy, beautiful family that's safe and I can support, I think that is what true happiness in a career is for me. There's a quote. Well, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I think as long as I'm happy and as long as I love what I do, I can never see myself being disappointed in the career that I have. I think, you know, whether it be sales, whatever avenue I take for business, I think that's really important. And I I need to remember that every day. Be happy and the long, happy life is the true meaning of success in my idea. That means career for you is something that is complementary to the life you're going to have. It needs to be your family and life and it needs to be complementary to that. That's how you view career. Yeah. yeah, obviously, I'd love to explore in the world, right? Go travel, do okay. new things, have a successful career in whatever I feel that I want to do. Everybody loves money, right? But I think what's important is really loving what you do. And I hope, you know, I have a successful career where I'm able to explore the world and explore different avenues of business. Makes sense, Hunter. Yeah, I mean, at least for me, I'm still figuring out what career means to me. There's a lot of pressure at school sometimes. A lot of people are going to careers like investment banking and Careers that are really demanding, you don't really have a work-life balance at all, if you have any resemblance one. And so I think I'm trying to figure out what I want. I definitely am not opposed to working a lot in the beginning of my career, but like you said, I think one day family is going to be really important to me and I want to be able to come home and see my kids or on the weekends, go to all the sports and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure that out. I think also at the end of the day, I've always had the idea I want to do something I really enjoy. And I think I'm really grateful that it seems, at least to me, like I enjoy consulting work. 
But yeah, I think the other thing I'm trying to be wary of too is that it, over time that evolves. Even just four years ago, I was interested in pretty different stuff. I think at one point I said I was going to be a chemistry major. I'm trying to be open to change and trying to give myself as much of a as much of a chance to explore different avenues and leave myself open for changing careers at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah that is definitely something that is very interesting. Finally, if you look back now, I'm sure you talk to a lot of high schoolers who are in your shoes where you were three years ago, four years ago. What advice would you give those who want to make a productive use of their time and want to have something meaningful along with the high school? What are some of the key learnings? What would you leave them with? Yeah, I had an influential teacher in my freshman and sophomore year, and she told me who you show up in class is relevant to who you will be for the rest of your life and where you will end up. And I think I've been lucky to understand what true friendship means and what a true friend has to offer. I think I spent a lot of time early in my high school years really wanting to be someone I wasn't. And I learned through time, through activity, through sports, and through learning that if you want friends, friends will come to you. I'd rather have three friends that really support me and who I am than a hundred friends, right? And I think that I found the perfect group of friends that have supported me and helped me become the best version of myself. Hunter and our other friends, every day we talk about things such as investing and resumes and portfolio work. And I think it's funny. An example of this is we went out to dinner the other night. Kids going at 11 p.m. We went out to get a burger. and Some guy behind us was talking about the nuance of our conversation and how it's wonderful to hear such young kids talking about things that are so important in the daily life, right? Such as like investing and understanding the idea and the importance of our futures. And I thought that was really important, but it also struck me as something that really like resonates with who my friends are. And so I think to circle back to what you're saying is that uh, having a successful friend group and a friend group that's really career goal oriented is something that's super important. And I think as well as that quickly is weightlifting and being able to emphasize exercise puts in the importance of hard work and dedication. And that's something that we have really gotten along with going to the gym every day after work. It, it, nine to five, we wake wow. up, and we have work, and then we'll go. I went to the gym right after work today, right before I got here, and then he's going to go after. So, <laughs> oh, wow. You give me complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess my advice would just do stuff that you like. I think I, there was some pressure to do stuff that wasn't really into, for example, like classes and stuff. But I think if you, if you just really lean into stuff you enjoy, you're going to be a lot more successful at it. And therefore, you're going to put a lot more time in. You're going to have a lot more passion. I think that's what ultimately leads to success. And I think that that's super true for your career as well. I think you should find something that at the end of the day, you're going to want to do. You're going to want to look into it outside of school and outside of work. I think that's been the biggest thing for us is that no one said we had to do work, guys, but we were all really interested in business. We had done a lot of community service. And so having that foundation of doing stuff we enjoyed ultimately led to our venture with where you guys and then on top of that yeah i think just stay busy i think there were times where i felt like especially going to high school during covid where you could do nothing but i think the biggest thing that i did to help me out was just being busy and trying to get ahead even if i had downtime i think there's opportunities where you can either get ahead or do nothing and i think if you take those opportunities to get ahead they're just gonna just keep building your success and at one point you're going to look back and it's going to be insane how much you've grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hunter and Andrew, I have been watching your journey from the beginning. I'm, I've firsthand seen how proud the community is of you, of the services you're providing. And with where your hearts are, I have no doubts that you will be very successful in your careers and in your life. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your journey and inspiring a lot of other youngsters. Thanks Thank you having, so much. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. This is Career Calling and I'm your host Pratibha Pandey. Thank you for tuning in.